Hi guys, I'm Dodge. This is Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio and today we're talking in depth about brushes. Now I know if you're following this beginner series uh, right from the beginning, you're going to be really eager to pick up your paint brushes and crack on. There's just a couple more videos guys before we start the project and this being one of them. So there's this and then there's colour theory next. So we do thank you for your patience but we're trying to put as much depth as possible into the uh, beginner series um, just so we don't overlook anything and we cover all bases here. As we are only discussing brushes in this one, we are not using them. I decided I'll use some images up here to show you what I'm talking about and make sure they're nice, crisp and clear rather than mucking about with the uh, other camera. Um, I tried that, that didn't turn out very well and for the better result on the video, I've opted to go for this option. So, brushes. There's a lot to talk about with brushes where to start, what brand to use, or what is available to you. Well, let's start with what's available to you, and we will go through the ones me and Andy are aware of, or at least use, as we can give you an honest opinion about these brushes. Now, firstly, if you're new to the hobby, the first brush you are most likely to pick up is the Games Workshop Standard Brush, or Small Layer Brush. That's fine. Uh, they do work absolutely fine for you. Not a problem there at all, except um, if you're a painter like me and Andy and you spend five to six hours a day painting, the brush doesn't last as long. But as a beginner painter, um, they are reasonably priced. Obviously, as you can see here, they're going to come in a whole variety of sizes and shapes. But the standard is actually going to be the one you use more often than not for absolutely everything. So I tend to stick to the small layer brush and I use that for almost everything. I will use that for base coating if necessary and uh, priming with a brush if I wanted to, but I would usually use a, a medium sized brush for that one. Now obviously the Games Workshop have all the effects brushes as well. Now they have the wash brush, which personally I'm not a huge fan of. I prefer to use a medium brush or a standard layer brush to get my washes where I want them, just because it enables me to keep in more control. I do think that Games Workshop's wash brush is one of the reasons people get a lot more pooling than they hope, because it's a very absorbent set of bristles and uh, it can be quite misleading as to how much wash you've got on there. And of course, in that other set, when it comes to basics, you have the Games Workshop dry brush. We hate dry brushing in the studio. Uh, we have a joke that dry brushing is actually for peasants. Um, you won't see us doing it unless we absolutely have to do it to get a certain effect. We recommend that during this beginner series, if you've been following along, you try not to dry brush because it is, one, it's a shortcut, so your other skills are going to not develop as well. It's just going to be easier. You want to paint a cloak um, as a beginner, oh, it's going to be easier to dry brush, but you're not going to learn anything. So that's one of the reasons we don't like it. Um, dry brushes do have their place in the hobby, definitely. Uh, when it comes to doing terrain or it comes to doing rough surface textures like designs on your bases and things like that, they are absolutely perfect for that. But not so much for the other models. Whatever you could do with a dry brush, with a bit of patience, you can go over with a different brush and put those edges in yourself and put them precisely where you want them. The other problem that we have with the dry brush, um, us and the beginners, is keeping that thing clean. Because it's extremely absorbent, so washing it off means that you, your dry brush is now completely soaked. Which means you have to dry it absolutely thoroughly before going to dry brush another colour. Which takes time. Um, we tend to use a hair dryer actually. We wash it off and then use a hair dryer to uh, dry those bristles. But that does in fact make them fluff up quite a lot. So the straight edge that you get here will eventually uh, start to fade away quite quickly. So maintaining the dry brush is actually not as easy as the other brushes. Now we're talking about maintenance. I'm going to put an image up here. None of this. Don't be doing this. Do not put your brushes in the water and leave them sat there. I do know Games Workshop tell people this all the time when they're sat at the painting table but some people either don't listen or don't think it's it matters it does matter if you leave them soaking in water and slightly bent that's how they're going to dry and you're going to have destroyed your brush you're going to 
absolutely ruin the fine end on the tip and um, that's going to be no good to you anymore so it's a complete waste of brush um, it's unnecessary wash your brush off dry it with a little bit of tissue and of course one of the techniques we use is we roll the brush in our mouth which basically means you're going to suck on those bristles and twist and pull the brush and that's going to put all the tip of your brush to a fine point again and then just let that sit there that helps keep the br bristles together um, in the original shape as it as it dries which is a technique you'll find yourself doing a lot but you also learn from that that a lot of paints don't taste very nice uh, me and Andy have first hand experience on which paints taste the worst but yeah that's for another video that will do for games workshop brushes at the moment because they're your standard ones as a beginner they're the ones that you're going to purchase and rely on now don't get confused or lulled into buying every type of games workshop brush you're gonna find that you've got them you're not going to use them they're gonna sit on your desk um, gathering dust most of the time also as a beginner it's just going to get more confusing when you're trying to figure out which brush you need for which job keep it simple get yourself a standard layer a medium get yourself a dry brush and if you really want to get yourself one for the washers as well and that will be a good starting set from a Games Workshop or Citadel, I should say. But of course, Games Workshop aren't the only brushes out there. Some people, like Andy, really like these brushes. These are Army Painter brushes. Um, I do like the bristles on these. They are um, quite responsive. And as you can tell, these have a different handle. These ones are sort of an acquired taste because of the triangular handle. I don't like them, but that's because I've been painting with a round handle brush the entire time. So I've learned to hold my brush in a certain manner, and uh, this just puts me off. But as a beginner, it's completely up to you. Um, I'd recommend trying them just to see if you feel like you've got more brush control there. The Army Painter brushes, they come in uh, different sizes, obviously, but uh, they're labeled differently. They're not just small and large, they have extreme detail, detailed, and Basically, they have a description in their name for sizes rather than numbers or small or large. So each brand is uh, very different to the others. I also find that when it comes to doing the pin wash, which is something we're not covering in this particular series because it's more of an advanced technique for finishing off models, it really does help with the oil wash. Those bristles are absorbent enough and they, they hold enough of the oil to do a real nice pin wash around the sharp edges of things and adding extra de extra depth now my personal favorite brushes and the ones i would recommend everyone else getting but that's just my personal bias would be the winter newton series 7 but price wise you're looking at a lot per brush whereas games workshop you're looking at three to four pound per brush these can range from anywhere between seven to 17 pound per brush so I would recommend, like I said in the beginning, sticking with the standard Games Workshop stuff. Then when your skills progress and you, you learn a bit about your brushes too, then maybe invest a little bit in a Windsor & Newton Series 7. The reason for this is that they last a lot longer than a Games Workshop brush. I've had mine for about a year. I had another one before that for a year and a half before the bristles finally went. Um, so you really do get what you pay for with those they obviously come in a bunch of sizes except the sizes for these work in a different manner so what we have is one will be your standard size so that will be about the same size as a games workshop standard brush then you can go up to two um, you're looking at like a medium brush there but the numbers for the fine detail brushes go backwards so it goes from one zero double zero and triple zero you will have seen me using those in our tutorials for certain jobs. They are excellent for edge highlighting, for doing eyes and um, doing sharp skin textures on faces. So I do recommend the Windsor & Newton Series 7, although I can also recommend for cheap brushes that are Windsor & Newton, you can just go into a WH Smiths or an art shop and buy watercolour paint brushes. From Windsor & Newton, there is a series of um, the blue ones i can't remember what they're called they've got a series of um, red handled ones they've got a whole variety of stuff um, that you can muck about with so what you're going to need to do as a beginner painter 
is you're going to need to experiment and basically find the one that you feel most comfortable with and whichever brand or size you feel most comfortable with that will become your standard brush that will be your go-to brush for almost every job the one that you're comfortable with the size of the way it feels and the way the bristles move and that's completely dependent on the painter themselves everybody has a different opinion on their brushes or a preference but as is quite obvious you don't want to be painting eyes with a medium sized brush so they do have a place and a size so you're going to keep it rational something else to note with uh, this brush section when to use these brushes or how to use these brushes so when it comes to holding your paintbrush you will find that a lot of people hold it like a pencil uh, quite but quite far away from the bristles which is great if you want to do long brush strokes but when you want to do small details what I find is if you slide your hand all the way down to the bottom and keep a tight grip you use it more like a small pin or something for inscribing and you'll get a lot more control like that but obviously because um, you're holding it in such a fashion you can't do long strokes with it um, because you have to move your whole arm and that means more force is going to go into it so that's just something to note and that's how I do eyes I always go further down the brush and it's something very easy to forget another technique that's very easy to forget why doing detail work or any form of painting uh, something I should have mentioned in the beginning of the video breathe when I was a beginner and a lot of other beginners you're concentrating really hard on not mucking your paint up and you do find yourself on occasion holding your breath this is extremely counterproductive to painting if you're holding your breath your brain's not receiving any more oxygen and your muscles will start to shake so it's actually counterproductive you're going to need to learn over time to relax inhale exhale and over time those brush strokes and painting techniques will just become second nature you'll be able to sit there just relaxed having a conversation and just painting away which is inevitably the whole goal is to be able to enjoy your painting without concentrating too much on it so it doesn't feel too much like a chore and you can see the results improving whatever's missing in this video will be in the part where we actually start painting something which will be after the next video because the next video is going to be color theory and talking about the brands of paint if you feel there's anything missed from this video don't forget we do have a comment section down below so any questions or just opinions on what brushes you use drop them in the comments have a chat with me or andy have a chat with the other subscribers and uh yeah share ideas and experiences down there that's what the comment section is for guys and as with every video we have some uh, big thank yous to our patrons who help support this channel a great deal and enable us to buy a bigger variety of models to paint for tutorials for you as you can see over the past six months there's been a lot of different ones so a big thank you to D Wack, Warren, Love Minis, The Oak Boys, Joe Spearpoint, Ludwig Hofbauer, Kit Lindquist and Agnes of Dawn. You are our top paying patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome. You've been helping us run the competitions and giveaways. You've been helping us with um, getting in new models and we can't thank you enough for that. They, if you want to join them on Patreon and help support the channel so we can make even more videos, more content for you guys. Um, links for that are in the description. If you're a patron of any level, you also get thrown into our competitions uh, automatically, as well as getting access to about a month ahead worth of videos, sometimes even more. You get uh, all the early access and goodies in there as well, as well as there being somewhat interesting tiers. And as, the as for the brushes I've mentioned and all the materials, you can get them down at The Outpost. Uh, link in the description as well they are our affiliate link 15 to 20 percent off brushes paints and everything else we use in the studio um, so follow the link down below and that's all from us in this episode in the next episode we'll be covering paints and color theory and after that we're finally going to get around to starting a project guys so thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one